So we can say if the form is submitted and the form is valid. Now we have no validation on this form at this point, but again, it's very common symphony idiom to make those two checks together. Then what we'll do here is just dump out some text. And what that will do is just add a little extra piece of information to the web debug toolbar to say some text if we have actually submitted the form. Okay, so let's check that. So you can see we don't actually have anything at the bottom there because we haven't submitted the form. And then we'll just say a at b.com, send that through. And this time we can see some text. So now if we have submitted the form, we can get access to the form data. So we'll say data is equal to form get data, which will contain an array. And again, we could dump that out. In fact, we will, but we could also do something interesting such as create ourselves a message, an instance of Swift underscore message from which we will create a new instance. And at this point you may be thinking, whoa, we've just sort of jumped up a notch. But honestly, this is just available in the documentation. It's not something that you need to memorize or anything. I'll link to where you find this in the show notes. And so we'll say set the subject to be support form request or support form submission maybe. And this is going to be our email that gets sent. We'll say set from. And we actually know that we're going to get a from email address here. So what we can do is we'll say from our data to simply get the from. So whatever was submitted on the form for the from field, just use that as our from address. We can set the to. Well, we always want to send it to the same address. Now you could do clever things here, such as use a parameter from your parameters YAML, but we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to hard code a value in. And the value that we're going to hard code in is literally this one. So I'm not going to scramble the address. I'm just going to take this one out. And you can go to Gorilla Mail and get your own address. No need to copy that one. These are just disposable email addresses basically. And then we'll say set the body. So this can be whatever you want to send. And this takes two interesting parameters. Firstly, the actual message that you want to send. And then secondly, the, the type of the content that we're going to send, which in our case is going to be text slash plain. But of course you could use HTML or whatever. HTML and emails is always a bit, bit tricky. We're just going to go with text plain. And just to keep things slightly varied, as you can see at the top here, we've done data equals form get data. And then inside here, we've used data and then as an array, get the from key from that array. So whatever's in the from key, replace it with and then put it into set from. But we could also, and you sometimes do see it written like this, go form, get data, and then the message. And again, the message is just from our form field. That's the name of the field. So that's the name that the key, the name of the key, should I say, where the data is going to be stored. But again, they're identical in terms of functionality. It's just slightly different syntax. And then we'll say text plain and we can close that off. And finally, if we've got this message, simply creating the message isn't going to send it. For that, we need to use the mailer. There is already a mailer configured with Symphony, the Swift mailer. So I'm just going to use that. I'm going to grab that from the container. Don't need to do anything more than this get, and then I can simply send that message. Now, I don't have this configured at the moment to actually send any mail, but we don't need to worry about that. All we're going to do is try and send our form again. And you can see this time, a mail was actually sent, although it didn't actually go out. It would have been sent. This is the interesting thing, I suppose, about this setup. And we can see that array of data that we dumped out. So if we look inside here, you can see that we do have an error and we'll look at that in a sec. But this would have been the mail that we would have sent from a at b.com, our support form submission with that message body. And if we look in the logs, this is basically saying that we don't have the right parameters set up. So if we look in parameters YAML, you can see that this is not going to work because this is nonsense in our case. So I'm going to paste in some good values. And of course, I can't share these with you. You need to get these or equivalent settings of your own. And I will link to more resources on this in the show notes. One super useful way of doing this is with Gmail. But for obvious reasons around spam and whatnot, I can't share my credentials, unfortunately. So now if we go back and we send this through one last time, and we can see no error this time. Our mail was sent. We're still getting that information logged out. And if we look inside our Gorilla Mail inbox, we do get our support message. So in this video, we've covered working with Bootstrap for styling. We've touched on some Twig templates. We've looked at creating and sending an email. We've used forms and we've handled our first form submission. We've also covered a way to dump out data, which is extremely useful for debugging. 
and covered parts of the Symphony Profiler. In the next video, we're going to expand on this, creating our first form type, which is a reusable form, and extracting out this logic into its own controller action.